Sean, on reflection, was it a case of injuries catching up with you against Wolves? And if it was, how do you get back to the levels that we saw in four straight wins and also the performances against City and Spurs? Uh, yeah, I think that's the key to the bigger picture is the performance levels have been very good. Um, we didn't get the two results against um, City and Spurs, you said, um, but the performances were there. First time we'd stepped to our bench after the game, really, with our performance level since Villa, but a different aspect to it. Injuries, suspensions, all taking their toll over the last few weeks. Um, and eventually, I think the, the players, the, the game schedule, which don't get me wrong, I'm not changing the storyline, it's there, we all get on with it. Um, but it did catch up with us. The, the, I think that was quite obvious with the performance. With that in mind then, we know that Kevin Thelwell and yourself have said that it's likely to be a quiet month in this transfer window, but has that injury <coughs> situation changed the thinking in so much as I know you were thinking at one point that if you could if there was a deal that presented itself, then maybe you could work something. Is it more a case now of perhaps we need to do something to get some bodies in and great? To do any deal, you know, there has to be finance about There has to be the club has to be in a situation to do the deals. We had to work very hard. Um, Kev certainly had to work hard to construct deals that could be worked into the way the club were in the summer. We managed to do that, as we said. Managed to rebalance the squad the best we could. We had to lose some players as well. Um, the situation is similar but different. You know, it's. You never know the twists and turns of football, how deals present themselves, but at this moment in time, it's very likely to be quiet. Would the takeover going through make any discernible difference to the ability? Well, yeah, again, we'll see because they've been very casual with their information to us because it's not a done deal yet. So therefore, they said, look, we're not going to get involved in things because, you know, all the due diligence, the checks and everything. So they're very, they're very upfront with us. You know, I did say we had a very casual chat about life at Everton, what it was. They were picking our brains about learning about it. Um, and becoming more informed, but that was it. No <coughs> ongoing talks with the prospective owners as to what you could possibly do in the transfer? No. Is that disappointing in some respects? No, I think it's the reality. I think they're trying to just tell the, to, to tell the truth and say, look, you know, until it's a done deal, we can promise all sorts. You know, so, <laughs> there'd be no point to that. You know, and I'm, I prefer facts when we can get them. In terms of what you're looking at squad-wise this week, then, Decore, is he back or is it not worth the risk in the FA Cup? Just yeah, I mean, look, these, these are the decisions that will be made. Um, there, there are people who are touch and go, and then do you play and do you not, as you can imagine. Um, we hope to have a couple back in um, uh, with the idea of playing, or certainly in the squad. Luke's back in full training? Just about, but, but it would be a touch and go scenario. And Idris Gay as well, what's happening with him? Will he go to AFCON? He probably will. He's still here at the moment receiving treatment. Um, but if that treatment comes to an end, which it probably will do, maybe over the week and early next week, and then of course their, their power is to call him up. Uh, and any further <coughs> updates on <coughs> Ashley Young and, and Delhi as well? Yeah, Delhi's uh, still, you know, he's been assessed. It's a, you know, he's got a, an, an injury that still needs time. It did do anyway. We've been trying to take the, the heat away from that to allow him time. But of course, it's fair everyone asks the question. Um, Young, he, he's. Uh, he was out on the grass today, but on the medical side, so he's still got a bit to go, but it's good to see him back out on the grass. How much of a balancing act have you got to do in this cup tie? Because it's 10 days between the cup tie and the next league game, but is there a need to rest players who've had so much work, like Sid Tarkowski, Branthwaite, of course, even put Dwight McNeil into, into that category as well, James Garner? Well, kind of, but I've still made it clear that, that we want to win every game. We want to put a team out that can win every game. There's certain parts of the team have been very successful the way they're playing as individuals and the collective. So, you know, we, we want to put out a side that I believe can win. Um, that's certainly our, our mentality and our viewpoint. And the, the, the league game down there <clears> certainly <throat> seems to have a bit of a cup tie feel, cup tie feel to it the way it went. Um, what are you expecting this time around down there? Well, they got their result that they, they needed from a, a tough run of games. You know, that can happen. Very, uh, a very wise manager, that's for sure. Um, I'm not sure whether they'll make change or they'll, they'll stick with the team. Um, we'll have to wait and see. You know, like cup situations do, not always, but often offer changes to sides and, and the feel of a game. So we'll have to make sure that we're ready to get the feel right and the mentality right. You fancy going on as long as Roy? No, absolutely not. I tell him every time I see him, I'll tell him again. At the weekend, I'm Ray. I always say, what are you two doing here? But uh, great operators, to be fair, great operators. Great football men, as they used to call it. Cheers, Sean. Thank you. And I'll go to <coughs> you Radio Merseyside. Hey, Sean. Hiya. Um, I just wanted to ask about Decore. Obviously, I know he's touch and go, but the stats show that, you know, without him, there hasn't been a win when he's been in the side for you. Does that just show how difficult it is to replicate the job he does? And if you could find somebody, could you bring anybody in to do that if he gets injured again? Well, he's done very well without a shadow of a doubt. Um, 
he's fitting into the side in a number of different ways, but mainly in that more advanced role. Um, the idea of placing him, yet again, it's, and you, you might find one in your system, but it's not always easy to do with his experience and his, his uh, physicality and the way he goes about eye for goal, of course, as well. Um, yeah, and then you really looking into the world of transfers and that obviously costs money. Kevin Thelwell said in his programme notes it was a low-key January expected. If a big money offer came in for one of your players, though, do you think you could ensure that they could remain with your squad because it is already a small squad? Well, that would be down to the powers that be. You know, they'll make them decisions inevitably. They'll ask my advice, I'm sure, and it's fair to say we've got a, a more rounded squad put together with a reason. It's Apart from the obvious 10-point situation, it's, it's obviously performed better if you went on the points tally, adding them points back on, that is. Um, therefore, it's shown signs of progress. So you don't really want to start taking that to pieces, certainly not midway through a season, but the club might view it differently, so we'll have to wait and see. The disappointment of the League Cup with the penalties at the end and going out that way. Have you spoken about that ahead of the FA Cup? How important to Everton is an FA Cup run? No, not in the sense that the reality of the current situation is still the same as, as it often is. The, the Premier League is the number one, it's the be-all and end-all, but... My respect to the FA Cup has always been made clear, and I want the players to understand that. We we obviously, I thought it was very clear from uh, the, the the last cup that we we were trying to put a team out there could win, and of course a penalty away from doing so um, after another decent performance. So I'll certainly be putting out a team with the mentality to go and win. Um, over the new year, we saw an update from Dwight McNeil and his partner. Obviously, I won't ask about that specifically because that's to do with them. But just how impressive has it been, given he's had all that going on? Obviously, you know, you must have known about it, but he's put in performances week after week that has seen him, you know, either scoring or assisting, you know, and he's had all that going on at home. Well, you know what? You wouldn't want fans or pundits or anyone from the media to know everything about everyone's life, but, you know, people only see him when they're out on a football pitch and presuppose what's wrong with them, why aren't they doing this, why aren't they doing that. They still have lives. Everyone still has a real life, you know, and it can be, like anyone, it can be challenging at times, you know, for many different reasons. Like I say, you wouldn't want every fan to know every situation because it make it too bland because they're just pretty spell, oh, well, you know, an off day because they've got a lot on type thing. But sometimes you would hope that people sometimes do take a breath and think, well, hang on, I wonder what is going on. As it happens on this occasion, it's a positive situation where I agree Dwight's handled, handled this situation very, very well, continues to do so and played very well. Other people can find it challenging, different things that happen in life. So there is often a story behind the story of players, but his is a, a positive one at this moment, without a doubt. Great, thank you. Thanks, Julia. I'm going to Shamoon at the BBC. <clears throat> Hi, Sean. Uh, just on the scheduling, the players get flogged in December with eight games and there's potentially only four in January. Is that something that I need to look at, the balance of games? Well, I mean, you, you will understand that when they do the fixture scheduling, the only thing I would say is there's lots of teams in lots of competitions and when you're adding, you know, the European runs and teams in that sort of side of things, there must be a reason why they try and piece these games together. You've always got this strange, um, I did reference it after the last game, this strange situation where on the one hand everyone's saying, why don't you add all the minutes on, so therefore, and Saturday was a good example, I, it was nine minutes the fourth time, it should have been ten. Why are you telling me that? I don't know. Anyway, so I was like, well, on the one hand, you're saying players too many games. On the other hand, you're saying add more time to the games. There's more competitions, and then they put more games in around December, so I can't really decipher who's, which, which camp is everyone in. You know, some people are in their health and safety and well-being camp. Some people are in there, they should play more football. You get on with it. I'm in the get on with it camp. That's the way it goes. This is what you pay to do. This is the job. But it is, it is challenging. There's no two ways about it. And we're... And, for the only time, I must say, during that run of games that we've had, can't speak for everyone else, Wolves was the only one we really came away from it. But you add in, it's not just the physicality, we were stretched as a unit as well. So that had its part to play as well, you know, with the tactical side and the understanding of the delivery of the performance. Does there need to be fewer games of things like replays and second legs? In the oh, yeah, but it's been debated for years. It doesn't matter what I say, it ain't going to change if I just say it, trust me. And what do you make of the timing of tomorrow's game, Thursday Thursday evening? I feel for, sorry for the fans going down. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one on that side of things. <clears throat> there will be a reason for obvious, you know, which is usually obvious, but the, the, the it is tough on the, the fans. Our fans are amazing for travelling. It is tough on the fans, but yet again, it's it's the the way the schedules work. It's the way the fixture works. So we get on with it. Well, 
just check on what Delhi's injury is. Sean, is it still the hip problem? Yeah, he's still it? struggling in that region, yeah. So he's had it assessed and now it's just a calming down period. Russell Martin said that the ball is in Everton's court when it comes to Mason Holgate's future. He obviously hasn't played a lot at Southampton. Have there been any talks with Southampton about what you recall? No, the player made it very clear. He wanted that start, that sort of fresh feel, going somewhere else, a new challenge. Um, wanted to get his teeth into it, so that's what I'm sure he will be doing. Um, I know he hasn't played as much as he wanted, but that's part of a professional's life. Will it be a case then of maybe Mason making the decision for himself then rather than Everton? Or? No, no, no. It'll be, it'll be, he's a Southampton player at the current time. And just a couple of weeks ago, you said Nathan Patterson, he's slowly but surely making improvements. What do you mean by that? Where do you maybe want him to, to work on in this game? To really yeah, it's not as simple as that. It's the natural maturation of a player. It's not just one thing. You don't just go, oh, you've got to head it better. There's a lot more about it. The game feel, the game understanding, making the right decisions at the right time. Uh, the physicality of the Premier League, still improving his body because he's still young. Um, you know, lots of different things go into the melting pot. And his knowledge of just playing game, you know, lots of games.